What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Toy RC Oda Builds, and I got a new one to show you guys today. Um, I'll bring you on in here and we'll take a closer look at this, but uh, it's a Proline cliffhanger body with some 3D printed parts from RC Nerds and uh, some other files that uh, you can just find on the Thingiverse. Um, so let's dive into this and I'll tell you about the chassis and what happened to this body and go from there. All right, welcome on into the uh, scale garage here. So, as I was saying, this is a Proline cliffhanger body. Um, I've been looking at this body for a while. I like that, uh, you know, is loosely based off of the early 90s Toyota pickup. Um, and being that, I 3D printed the At RC Nerds grill, which uh, really captures that look, and also got the emblem on there as well. And uh, I didn't have any. 3D uh, printer filament that was clear, so I just used the Lexan that uh, the headlights are actually made out of, and I cut that out of the the uh, Lexan uh, body, and I used it as the corner lights and the headlights. Um, also got the file for the door handles from uh, at RC Nerds. Check them out. They've got a bunch of files on my mini factory for. All different uh, kinds of bodies, mainly Lexum bodies, giving you 3D printed, uh, you know, add-ons for these bodies. Like there's a uh, tailgate handle. And I think just having these be three-dimensional and in hard black plastic helps add to the scale look of it a lot. Especially that grill, that uh, you know helps it a lot. Let's see if we can get this maybe to be a little bit brighter for you there to see. And I also, uh, I actually did some inner fenders as well on this body. Um, I just like hiding all that stuff in there. Um, but these are actually the Night Customs uh, file that you can print for the Night Runner. Um, and I just cut them pretty heavily to fit this uh, pinched um, nose on this uh, truck. But um, they actually fit in there pretty well. So I was pretty happy with that. And then I also got some uh, files from Thingiverse, um, just some free files. If you go search uh, scale radiator, uh, one tenth, you know, scale radiator, something like that, you should find a uh, radiator with fans out there um, that you can print for free. They're just files are out there on Thingiverse. So check that out um, if you have a 3D printer. But it consisted of uh, the actual radiator, which I printed in gray and then added some silver uh, paint too to help sell that radiator look um, and then also 3d printed in black the fans so I thought that was pretty cool the uh, cliffhanger bed is sort of lacking you know for interest um, you know for a, a scale truck like this or a trail truck or a comp crawler it's it's pretty plain I mean I did try to mask off to actually look like um, these were some type of, of bars in the cage, you know, as, as sort of what that's implied, and then some diamond plate down here. So and I tried to paint that way to make that look a little more interesting, um, but I just thought, you know, having a few scale details with a fire extinguisher and, as always, um, some, uh, some rear window stickers. Um, and then I just put one of these. Uh, these are Axial SCX-10-3 uh, portal axles. Got the KYX uh, aluminum cover on there just to add some some interest and some realism to it. Um, do have uh, uh, the brass portals on here, um, and the front is actual aluminum uh, Treal SCX 103 portal uh, axle on the front there. I guess SCX 103 styled, um, and then uh, yeah, as far as that, uh, it is a uh, G-Speed chassis. It's a G-Speed G10 uh, material, um, you know, carbon fiber style, um, class 2 competition chassis type low center of gravity with the angled skid on it. Um, 
and then a uh, stealth transmission from Enduro, an Element Enduro, uh, with some uh, with some overdrive on the front, uh, wild boar drive shafts, um, and then of course a uh, an Outrunner motor on this for some excellent low speed control. The uh, Three Brothers Yellow Jacket there. And uh, also a pretty good servo on here as well. The uh, Holmes Hobbies uh, BLS HS, H, uh, SHV 500 V3. Um, Got to love a lot of <laughs> letters in a name. Uh, but um, yeah, Vanquish uh, aluminum uh, servo arm there. But uh, it's a pretty good, capable chassis. Uh, just got some shocks here that uh, do have some oil in them, so they have a little bit of dampening, but they're set to full droop, just took all the, the springs off. So, um, Also on here I've got a uh, scalar fab, um, front bumper, but uh, yeah, as far as the body goes then, uh, I did... Uh, you know, did some masking on here to uh, just add some stripes. I wanted a uh, kind of retro look, but wanted to have it look like it was done modern. So got out the uh, purple metallic and uh, some gunmetal metallic along with some silver for the stripes. And uh, had my uh, wife print out for me some, some maskings uh, on the Cricket for uh, the Japanese Toyota logo and the Bill Stein. Um, Came out pretty well on this side. Uh, this other side did not fare as well. Uh, I don't know if I if I didn't wait long enough for the previous layer to cure, or um, you know if I just sprayed too much of the silver on this side and it kind of reactivated the other paint around it. But I got some some smearing. I guess um, the paint was running uh, from one layer into another kind of thing. So it, it made it quite blurry over here, but everything else, uh, came out well as far as the stripes go and the, the, uh, you know, logos and decals. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like how this truck came out with these, uh, BF Goodrich crawler, uh, TAs on here. I, uh, ran this last Sunday at our local competition, uh, mainly just on, you know, rock terrain. Um, but they, uh, this truck did pretty well out of 26 people. I came in eighth place. So, you know, nothing to write home about, but, uh, it wasn't, you know, terrible for, uh, for a truck that I really don't drive a whole lot and, uh, definitely have some things though. I'm going to change on here. I think I'm going to, uh, uh, trade out this, uh, scalar fab bumper for a different bumper that just doesn't stick out as far. Uh, it does stick out, uh, pretty far. And I'm also going to, uh, trade out the, uh, BF Goodrich crawlers, which, I do love the look of them on this truck. I think they look fantastic um, with this body. It's just mean and aggressive in these big lugs, but I think a set of Hyraxes um, will just be a little more competitive. Um, and uh, what else? I think that's about uh, everything on this truck. I tried to keep it pretty clean. Um, I do have some windshield wipers, uh, inspection sticker, and some other just little uh, stickers and, and details just to add some interest. Um, but other than that, uh, trying to keep it clean under here, um, battery tray, this kind of cut out on these uh, inner fenders from Knight Customs gives you a good place to mount a battery tray and to have your battery there. And uh, try to do some wire looms also in there and just keep everything looking pretty. So besides the grill and the door handles, RC Nerds also uh, has some other uh, parts that you can print for the cliffhanger. Um, they have some mirrors, which I don't know if you can see that there's actually some scratches right where the mirrors would go. So for being a, uh, a, you know, just a local comp truck, I didn't put the mirrors on here fearing that they would get, you know, knocked off pretty quickly. Um, they also have uh, tail lights and a third brake light. Um, I haven't added those yet, um, but I have left that clear. Um, so I could either cut that out or, um, just, uh, you know, mount it behind there, uh, from ProLine, they do give you these, uh, tail lights, um, which can go behind here. So you can actually get the lights in there and, uh, you know, working if that's what you so uh, desire to do. Um, I also, uh, you know, have that, uh, Tamiya paint that's, uh, clear. Um, I don't know if, uh, I have it here handy. 
So on lenses, uh, this is what I use. Um, I have the Tamiya Color acrylic paint. Um, this stuff is clear orange and clear red. Uh, it is pretty fumy and smelly, and apparently it will, uh, you know, explode or catch fire or something. <laughs> um, so I typically, uh, I paint this stuff on in my bathroom with just the overhead fan on to try to suck the air out or uh, or do it outside or something because it, it is really smelly. Um, but that is what, uh, what I use on my lights, and I think it comes out pretty nicely, as you can see on these uh, marker lights. That was just clear Lexan. Uh, originally from the uh, from the body um, so that is what I use I would uh, probably eventually um, paint the third brake light with a bit of red behind it and uh, also paint the uh, the brake lights to have some red and yellow as well um, just to uh, just to be more realistic I might not add lights because I don't want a ton of wiring everywhere but uh, I think it's pretty cool that they give you these uh, inserts with the bodies um, that's pretty neat uh, but uh, RC Nerds does have uh, have some actual uh, tail lights with lenses you can 3D print and all that, so check that out as well. Um, I guess uh, I didn't really uh, get into uh, you know why what exactly I'm building this truck for. It is a local uh, comp group that we have that gets together uh, once a month and has a sort of Sorka based styled competition. Uh, there's just no scale points, so um, we're basically just class two, uh, bring a class two truck that, that would be able to run in a, a Sorka class, but scale points don't matter. So that's the sort of, uh, sort of style that they are, uh, are going, you know, uh, by. It's just easy for a local group to get together each month and have a competition like that when we're not worried about scale points and it's just bring your class two, um, legal truck and run some gates. Uh, if you're unfamiliar what uh, what a Sorka styled uh, competition is for these crawlers, um, it basically is a precision driving competition that starts you off with uh, a series of gates. So basically you have 10 gates to a course and maybe three courses to the entire competition. But anyhow, they start off with, uh, you know, basically gates and it's, it's just trying to get through these gates without hitting them and uh, without rolling your truck over or taking a reverse uh, in class two. Uh, pretty much get your roller out. It's 12 inches uh, between gates, I believe, and uh, and you try to drive through them without touching those gates. So that's a little bit easier said than done, though. Um, you know, this is typically going to be set up in a precarious position, and you're going to find it difficult to drive through this. And uh, you might end up, oh, touching that gate or hitting it with any part of your truck is going to cost you a gate, and that's 10 points. And the whole idea is it's kind of like golf is that you, uh, you know, you want to keep a low score. So that 10 points is now putting you down uh, further in the ranking uh, versus somebody that's able to go through them without touching any gates. So that's that's roughly what that type of competition is like. I'd like to do more of an in-depth video on it uh, since when I went to my first competition, I knew absolutely nothing about it and uh, basically learned it there and after I got home uh, on the fly from YouTube and other videos. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what I've gone for here. Um, Lexan painting is fun. Check out Hemistorm on uh, YouTube if you want to get good at it. I didn't follow probably any of his advice. <laughs> But uh, I will be now that uh, I'm watching his videos. Um, so I'm going to try to uh, to up my uh, painting game and uh, get some even cooler designs. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. And uh, I have some footage here of, uh, of the build process and just some time lapse to show what it was like to go from a clear Lex and body to a kind of a, you know, build up truck here. So just cutting out the body here. I use uh, Lexan snips. Um, did see a lot of people recommend the uh, the utility knife and just scoring and breaking method of the uh, Lexan. I'm not so confident that uh, you know that I might not score a part of the body I don't want to or slip and and cut something. So the Lexan snips seem to work just fine for me. Um, once I get the body cut out, though. I uh, clean it up with a utility knife a little bit, try to take off some of those burrs, and then start mocking up the body. Try to fit up, uh, you know, the front bumper, rear bumper, uh, sliders, and figure out exactly where the body's going to sit. Make sure that, uh, you know, the body sits over the wheel wells nicely. 
and uh, I've got the correct wheelbase and uh, everything's uh, fitting nice. Um, make sure that the tires don't hit too much of the, uh, the Lexan and then uh, figure out where the body posts are going to go. Might uh, try out some other scale details too and just sort of mock it up and see, uh, you know, see what I like. Here we got the uh, grill printed, and I need to cut out the grill on the uh, the body, so I use the Lexan snips again for that, and uh, clean it up a little bit with the X-Acto knife, and then fitted the grill in. I then uh, mark usually with a sharpie on the outside of the body on the plastic where the body posts will go. I start those holes with a reamer, but then I use the actual drill bit uh, for the the post size that I want and uh, finish that with just a drill. Um, seems to work out well for me. Um, I trimmed up the, uh, the fenders a little bit more just trying to get those tires not to rub and that's sort of what I'm doing is lifting up the tires and turning them like I'd be steering it and flexing the suspension and seeing how much they're going to rub. Um, from there I just use some tape, mock up the grill, just trying to get a good look at what, uh, what this truck is going to look like. And uh, again, clean out uh, the, uh, the underside of the body um, with some soap and water and then I would just dry it out. Um, had a few more little cuts to make. I try to you know, make all these fine little cuts and adjustments before you paint. Um, I, I'm guessing that you probably don't want to cut after painting. I think you're more than likely going to hurt your paint job doing that. So I try to make every little cut and adjustment I can and really mock it up. Uh, to perfection and even try driving it and turning your tires and just making sure you don't need to cut those fenders anymore um, Here I'm cutting out now some masks for these stripes kind of have an idea in my head, but just kind of letting the creativity flow and just go with it as uh, as it comes and here I actually used a uh, part of the windshield masking template uh, they had some straight lines some some thick uh, straight lines on that sheet so I just went ahead and used them and then used some uh, automotive grade um, pinstriping that I had for uh, for some other lines and uh, I mocked up some lines I ended up just taking off I uh, put some on the hood uh, sort of that retro style that uh, Toyota used to use and uh, and here I'm just putting some screws actually into the grill there's some tabs on it uh, that they have for mounting um, probably for gluing it to the body, but I chose just to use two little uh, tiny uh, screws to, uh, to hold that into the hood and, uh, and then printed the emblem, painted it up, and uh, got it on there. And here I'm just cutting out those lenses again from the, uh, from the grill on the, the original body. And, uh, and then just some final masks that uh, my wife printed for me on her Cricut. So I get those uh, laid out and... Uh, mocked up on the body and uh, some window masks as well and we're getting pretty close for paint masked off that uh, rear cage in the bed there and uh, in the tail lights and third brake light there wasn't a mask for the third brake light I just did my own um, but uh, yeah I think that was pretty much all the masking and then start bagging it up for uh, for the actual paint process um, here I decided to do uh, last minute the door handles and uh, sort of crudely cut out the door handles on the body. Um, it worked out all right. I think I might try to to do it more precisely with just the X-Acto knife, but I was eager to get this painted and outside. Um, so here I'm just using some Tamiya um, Lexan paint, and I started off with the uh, purple layer, and then uh, once the purple was done, I uh, I did the uh, gunmetal on the rear, and then I did the silver after that, and then just some black uh, to finish it off. It was kind of windy this day. It kind of makes it difficult. Sometimes that'll take the, uh, the spray, and uh, it won't go exactly where you want it. So here I come back when it's a little bit less windy and more in a sunny spot of my yard and uh, finish up the rest of the, uh, the painting. But uh, this is a slow process. It pretty much took me all afternoon um, to do a layer, let it cure. I was given it about 15, 20 minutes at the minimum uh, to cure and coming back and make, 
making sure it was you know pretty well dried and cured before I did another layer on it. And uh, here I'm just removing all the mask, uh, prepping for this uh, final uh, silver layer. And I actually, I think I did some black um, before I did the silver. I didn't want, uh, want my previous layers to get too metallic um, with the silver. So I think I did some black there or uh, did the over the purple with the gun metal. Um, here's the silver getting down to the final couple layers of uh, the spray paint process. I'm not a fan of spray paint fumes, even outside I like to, to wear a mask. Um, and then here's the, the most fun part, taking off the plastic once you get it all painted and, and see how it came out. And uh, super happy with how it came out, bummed that the, uh, the left side didn't come out for my uh, Toyota logo there, but uh, sometimes that happens, you just gotta go with it. Once it was cured up uh, for a day, I came back and added in, glued in the, uh, the door handles, just using some clear Gorilla Glue here. My, my shoe goo, which I typically would have used, was all dried up. Uh, the cap was broken on it. So uh, use some shoe goo, and then uh, use those screws uh, where I, I actually had tapped these uh, screw holes using a small little tap set you can get. I think uh, Dubro has a tap set for RCs that's pretty good. I really recommend it if you're, you know, making your own screw holes for things a lot. And then here I'm just painting up the inside of the headlights and the uh, marker lights to give them a silver um, chrome looking inside. Um, chrome pens work really well for this, but I just use some Vallejo model paint with some silver uh, metallic mixed with a little bit of gray um, to give it some ability to cover. And then I used... Uh, just some clear part cement from testers. It's uh, right there on the right to glue in the actual lenses once I had them cut it, cut out and uh, painted. And there I'm just cutting out those lenses again from the uh, from the parts left from the body. And uh, here's just a couple stills uh, right before paint and then right after paint. I still hadn't gotten in those inner fenders, so it's still a work in progress, but this is before any scratches, <laughs> before any test drives. And then this is after its first comp, so it survived pretty well, didn't get too scratched up. There you can see those gates, and uh, those are a couple actual gates from the comp running through them. All right, so there you go. Um, my next video which hopefully won't uh, take as long to come out as this one has since my last one. But uh, I'm gonna do some comp footage of this truck. We're going to uh, dive a little bit into what a Sorka competition is, what some of the rules are, and then uh, also film uh, you know, some courses being ran with this truck and uh, give you an idea of what exactly that's like and uh, you know how capable a truck like this can be. All right, so there you have it. Another episode of Toy RC Oda Builds. Uh, next episode, I hope to see you all out on the rocks. And uh, we'll get this thing crawling and uh, show you what it can do. All right. See you next time.